welcome back to my channel so today i've come up with a topic for you on steroid induced hyperglycemia so basically when people are suffering from cancer steroids are given to reduce the side effects but one more effect of introducing steroids might be hyperglycemia which is nothing but high sugar concentration in the blood so let me give you more details about steroid induced hyperglycemia today so more than 25 million people in us alone okay are having this issue of diabetes so we all know what is diabetes that is, that is nothing but increased sugar concentration in the blood so this is according to center of disease control and prevention so uh, diabetes can even lead to other side effects like obesity and this can be a risk factor for developing cancer so old age and obesity are the risks and type 2 diabetes uh, is more diagnosed and this can be further leading to cancer over the period of time so you need to be very careful so coming to steroids steroids which are given is dexamethasone so this is the common steroid that is given so this is the image just to show you the difference between normal sugar level hypoglycemia and hyperglycemia so hypo is nothing but low sugar so the white thing here is sugar representation of sugar so normal sugar you can see how much it is there and this is hyperglycemia where you have high sugar so you can see the white dots are much more compared to this and here it is low so that is why it is called hypoglycemia so during uh, this cancer treatment hyperglycemia is usually seen that is this condition so steroid induced diabetes is same thing so basically steroids are introduced to reduce or to control inflammation to control swelling or to calm your immune response because during cancer treatment you know your immune system has to be uh, calm so that it does not initiate other issues so here what happens is because you give steroid it can help you in these particular situations but it has a side effect that is hyperglycemia so basically i told you what is hyperglycemia basically whatever food you have it is broken down in your body as sugars and we have insulin in our body which has its role which helps in the cells to uptake okay so cells will uptake this sugar by the process of insulin so insulin is the mediator which does this work so that this sugar can be converted into energy so basically low uh, high sugar is leading to complications so this is just to show you the mechanism so we have the pancreas so in our body the pancreas secrete insulin okay so insulin has got chain a chain b which is linked by disulfide bridges so this is just to show you the structure of insulin so whatever you eat okay the food which you eat is broken down into sugars okay and this sugars is taken up by the cell okay these are the cells in your body so glucose absorption by cells so this absorption is mediated by insulin okay so what happens if the pancreas do not produce enough amount of insulin so if this insulin is not there the cell will not be able to take up this particular glucose so that is what is happening happening here so basically if insulin is there this will be taken up by the cells okay so but if insulin is not there here it cannot be taken up by the cells so in, since it is not taken up by the cells it will remain back in the blood so more sugar in the blood leads to hyperglycemia so that is nothing but high sugar in the blood so this can lead to type 2 diabetes so coming to short term effects of diabetes you feel more thirsty you have the urge of urination frequent urination you may have repetitive infections and you may feel very uh, lethargic or more fatigue might be there so these are the short term effects and coming to long term effects you may have kidney issues heart issues neuron issues you may have uh, obesity issues you may have eyesight problems and further stages it might even lead to cancer so coming to chemotherapy everybody know what is chemotherapy so during cancer treatment to kill this cancerous cells chemotherapy is given okay but most important side effect here is when you give this steroids it can lead to hyperglycemia as i told you so it's very very important to check the diabetic condition of the patient to check if he has got diabetes during treatment or during tre uh, treatment if it has initiated because of these issues that i spoke to you today so basically you need to check on the sugar levels and steroids as i told you it's usually given to reduce the side effects but one more side effect which can be initiated because of steroid is hyperglycemia so coming to 
the dosage to be decided this is very very important because uh, during this treatment people might suffer from diarrhea and the dosage of these steroids are usually decided depending upon the full uh, meal that the person takes thinking that if we eat so much how much of insulin has to be given to this patient but what happens is when the patient is not well he may not eat properly or if he eats also if he has got issues like diarrhea then that can lead to complications because during diarrhea you have uh, dehydration vomiting and those kind of issues and that that leads to issue of absorption of these sugars which can lead to complications okay so one more effect is that when we are not feeling well we are more prone to eat eating uh, comfort food which is rich in carbohydrates like you may have ganji okay basically so when you have this ganji it is more rich with starch and that can be broken down into more sugars so that can have a negative impact on your blood sugar levels again so that is why comfort food also can become a negative side during these particular situations so steroids as i told you can cause high blood sugar okay so when you do not have diabetes also it can lead to complications why okay why because your liver produces more sh uh, sugars during steroid treatment so this is one reason for it and it makes it harder for the sugar to move out from the blood so i showed you how the sugar molecules were present in the blood right so when the steroids are present in your blood it makes it more harder for these sugars to move out from the blood to reach the cells so if this is happening definitely its accumulation in the blood is going to be much much higher so that can lead to complications and uh, even your body might become resistant to insulin so definitely if your body is becoming resistant so resistant means it does not have the uh, capability to react with it properly so if it is resistant to insulin the insulin will not have the capability to bind to the receptors of the cell and take in the uh, particular uh, sugar molecule so that can lead to complications so in this way even uh, when you take these steroids in what form you are taking the steroids whether it's a tablet whether it is an injection even that will matter because when you are taking tablets it takes more time okay to uh, get dissolved in your body so that's way the chances of hyperglycemia might be much much lower but when it's an injection its effect is very fast within few hours it's completely moving into your body so when that happens the effect of this steroids which is negative effect of this steroid for hyperglycemia can be much faster okay so in this way the type of the steroid that you are taking plus the, even the dosage if more dosage of steroid is recommended the effect of hyperglycemia can be much much higher in that particular person so dosage also matters and what form you are taking that also matters so coming to effects of glucose uh, glucocorticoid glucocorticoid is nothing but steroids so the effect of these on glucose metabolism or glucose regulation so basically here what happens is it down regulates a particular transporter in the muscles okay so muscle cells the there's a transporter called as glucose transporter 4 so what happens is it, it down regulates this particular receptor or a transporter so that will help or that leads to increase in the uh, amount of glucose that is needed for the cells to take up glucose so if more insulin is needed your body has to secrete more insulin which is creating problems because your body will not secrete more insulin it will secrete how much it is required so here because of the down regulation of this particular transporter it is leading to complications because since more transporters are needed it is not there what happens it it accumulates in the blood as i showed you in the image so other thing is that your liver itself start producing more and more glucose so once more glucose is produced in your body you know it can lead to more glucose concentration which is hyperglycemia so this is done by the process of glycogenesis or gluconeogenesis by this process more glucose is produced in the body and uh, as i told you the inhibition of this insulin binding to the insulin receptor of the cells or decrease in the insulin secretion by the pancreas so all these can be the reasons for this particular condition so coming to steroid induced diabetes so i told you what do you mean exactly mean by this is priorly a person will not have diabetes but once he is uh, getting treated for cancer because of the steroids it is inducing the diabetes condition in this particular patient so this because of the side effects of chemotherapy as i told you because the steroids is leading to the complications so if you are having these short term effects symptoms during cancer treatment please discuss this with your doctors and see to it that this is continuously monitored that is the blood glucose level during the steroid treatment because we have seen how during the steroid treatment the glucose levels can rise in the person this is usually neglected and that is why it is leading to complications so please 
talk to your doctors regarding this particular issue if you feel that during this cancer treatment you have these uh, symptoms that i told you about diabetes then it's better you discuss with your doctor so this is a small study which was done so with the patients that is 77 patients which are who were treated with cancer so here you can see that uh, uh, initially there were only 22 people who had uh, insulin resistance but later after six to uh, three to six months of insulin treatment you can see 45 have got insulin resistance so insulin resistance indirectly means the person is now suffering from diabetes right so hypo, uh, hyperglycemia so with three to six three, uh, months of treatment with the uh, steroid we saw the number of cases were increasing so what's the reason so this is the reason the person is induced with diabetes because of the steroids so this is a small case study which was done so based on this we can understand that these steroids are capable of introducing or inducing diabetes in a patient who is suffering from cancer so coming to the takeaway messages we should definitely see how the patient is re receiving the corticosteroid so he ne uh, you need to screen the patient prior to the treatment for hyperglycemia and see during the treatment how the condition is worsening so that you can uh, think about how in which form to give the steroid and how to decide the dosage at different time intervals so that at one stretch only you don't give high dosage and lead to complications other thing is that uh, it is it is uh, highly seen that if you take higher sugar sweetened beverages there's more risk of cancer so as much as possible try to avoid these kind of uh, carbonated drinks or sweetened beverages in your diet and uh, usually this is overlooked the symptoms of uh, hyperglycemia so see to it that this is not overlooked and um, see to it that it is diagnosed properly because usually they uh, delay these uh, particular uh, diagnosis so see to it that uh, they do not uh, diagnose this at a later stages so it's better to not have uh, uh, more of carbohydrates in the diet so see to it that you have less carbohydrates in the diet and more proteins in the diet and uh, dietitians could definitely help you in deciding what food you need to take so definitely uh, you need to remember uh, so that you do not stop taking the this kind of uh, food or you don't stop taking steroids basically thinking that your uh, sugar levels are going high if you stop taking steroids it can have negative impact on your cancer treatment so you need to be very careful you have to discuss these side effects with your doctors and you can contact your medical team if you feel that you're not feeling well so adequate support and monitoring is very very necessary to reduce these complications So thank you for watching. Do like my videos. Do subscribe to my channel. If you feel that this video is worth liking, do you like it, do share it with people so that they get more information on this particular topic. And thank you for your support till date. Have a nice day.